Boker Tov, everyone. Thank you very much, Raya and Mordechai, for broadcasting this shir. And uh, we're looking forward to learning another shir, a Pirkei Avot, according to the teachings of Chasidut. We are in the middle of Mishnah Yud, Mishnah 10, of Perak Sheni, Chapter 2. And we're going to do the, the third third of the Mishnah. The first third of the Mishnah discussed the students of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. What good thing can we learn from each, uh, from each one of them, and what can we learn how to connect to good people? The second part of the Mishnah is how to re- keep away from bad people, and each one of them said something uh, um, specific, something special. And now the Mishnah is going to continue to say a statement, in fact, three statements from each one of the three students, I'm sorry, each one of the five students of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. So please open your text. The Perak Bet Mishnah Yud. Pretty much the, the second, um, it's approximately seven or eight lines from the end of the Mishnah. Um, doesn't, it shouldn't really matter which text you have. It starts with the word Haim. There should be a period beforehand. Haim Amrush Loshad Dvarim. They. Who is they? All of the students of uh, Rabbi Yochan ben Zakkai said, each of them said three things. It's known, we've said this earlier, that many statements in the Perkei uh, Avot are divided into three parts. So, so too, it comes when we talk about the students of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Now, with the statement of Rabbi Eliezer, who was really Rabbi Eliezer ben Harkonus, the son of Harkonus, it's a little bit difficult to divide up the statement into three parts, but I'm going to suggest, as we'll see at the end, how it's divided into three parts. Rabbi Eliezer Omer. Rabbi Eliezer says, Yehi chavod chaverach, chaviv alecha keshalach. The honor and respect of your friend should be beloved to you just as yours, just as you and I and every single human being want to be respected, want a basic loving relationship, care and attention. So too, when you look at your friend, which, be, which means another Jew, you should also naturally have a, an authentic kavod for chaverach, just like the Mishnah, uh, we're going to talk about in a few moments, about the, about the, the verse, you have to l'reacha kamocha. You should love your friend just as yourself and the difference between them. But reacha is your friend in Torah mitzvot, which means a Jew. We have to love every single human being. But the mitzvah per se, the commandment of loving someone else is the mitzvah of v'yahavta l'reacha kamocha. So the first statement is that you should love your, your, the honor, the honor of your friend should be beloved to you just as your own. V'al tihinach lichos. You should not be easy to, to get upset. Should be be calm, be uh, understanding. The next statement is, "V'shuv yom echad l'fnei mitatach." A person should do tshuva one day before they pass away. Now, obviously, a person does not know when they are destined to pass away. So, therefore, every day, every hour, every moment, a person should be involved in doing tshuva. A person should should do tshuva and make sure that they are. 100% uh, on par with the Kadosh Baruch Hu, with the Almighty God, as if they will Khalila pass away the next moment, or as if Mashiach comes this second, and then we'll be here forever and for itself. We talk over here about the importance of how we are supposed to, uh, I think the word is, revert Talmidei Chachamim Torah scholars, how we are supposed to honor 
how we are supposed to uh, treat um, Torah scholars. So first of all, he says, the Mishnah, Rabbi Eliezer says, the Havei Mitchamem, one should warm themselves up. Keneged Oran Shachachamim. With the light of the, of the Torah scholars. Also, the Havei Zahir Begachalatan Shalotikave. A person should be careful with their coals. That a person should not be burnt. In other words, the first statement of warming up to their light is a positive thing. A Talmud Chacham, a Torah scholar, has lots of light and warmth. And the closer that we get to a Torah scholar, the more warm we become and the more warmth we receive. Then the other state, the next statement is about the fact that a Torah scholar can, ha- can be very sharp. The, the Talmudic learning can really make a person very, very, very sharp, very wise. And it's possible that from the extreme, quote-unquote, heat of the Talmud Chacham, a person may, Khalila be burnt, as we'll try to explain in a few moments. This is a little bit harsh, what we're going to say, read now, but it's part of the Holy Torah. And so therefore, we're not going to skip it. We're going to continue to learn it. Even if we may not understand 100% all of its details. Shen for the bite of the Talmud Chacham is like Neshichat Shual, the bite of, of, a, of a fox. Va'akitzatan, and it's also like a sting, like a bite. Akitzat Akrav, like the sting of a scorpion. Ulechishatan, and they're consuming, like burning, is lechishat saraf, like the burning of, of a... Of a of a, 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 a snake, which, which is very, a poisonous snake. V'chol devrehem, and all of their words, are kegach are like coals of fire. In other words, the Torah always gives us all of the perspectives of, of, of every scenario. This on the, on the, um, the more loving statement as opposed to a, a uh, sincere and, and uh, more fearful statement. But nevertheless, whatever the Torah says is correct. So it seems to be that there is a perspective of Talmud Chacham of Torah scholars that they have well, let's, let's, let's say it in this way. You ever heard of the phrase, don't play with fire? You could say so, but the Talmud Chacham as well. A Talmud Chacham, a Torah scholar, is fire. Now, obviously, usually we, we say it in a, in a positive connotation, that a, a, a fire which lights up and it warms up, but it also is a package deal, and it also comes together with um, a very sharp, in a sense, maybe dangerous, um, maybe dangerous uh, um, connotation, which means that, for example, I'm going to give you an example and with a story as well. Actually, from a Hasidic Rebbe, which hopefully this will bring a point, uh, will we'll bring across the point. A person should never undermine speaking, God forbid, against a Talmud Chacham, a Torah scholar. Just like you would not um, speak against a very important individual, maybe an elected individual, because you have respect for him, how much more so when it comes to a, Torah, to a, to a Rebbe, to a Torah scholar. And there are enough stories, hopefully not many, but even one is one too many, where if a person speaks against the Talmud Chacham, it's not worth it. 
it's simply not worth it. Um, I'm going to try not to elaborate on this too much. I hope you get the message of what I'm trying to say. But I will say one story. The story is around the time of the Rabbi Dov Ber, the second Chabad Rabbi. And there was a person after he passed away. He was a Misnagid, and it's known that the Misnagdim were very, very strong in the time of the Alter Rebbe, the time of the Mittler Rebbe. And actually, Rabbi Dov Ber, when he became the Rebbe, he, he instituted, I believe, 10 Takanot, 10 new rules that would help lift up the morale of the Hasidim and protect them. So after the passing of the Mittler Rebbe, the, there was a certain person who spoke against the Mittler Rebbe, against Rabbi Dov Ber. And the story goes, I believe it's in Shemot V'Sipurim. I remember my father read the story to us several years ago. And this individual a cat ran up his back and stuck its paws deep into the person's shoulder. He basically couldn't move and it was extremely dangerous. Something to that effect. And somehow the, the Mittler Rebbe, uh, his son, Rabbi, Rabbi Nachum, I believe, Rabbi Nachum was the one who got in touch with this person and told him, you better go to my father's kever quickly to his resting place and ask him for mechil, ask him for forgiveness, which happens to be the halacha. It's a halacha with, with every, anybody, especially when it comes to a tzaddik. I'm just trying to emphasize how, how much more severe it is when a person does this with a tzaddik. And he went, he asked mechila, and right after he went out of the, the, uh, the tzion, the kever, the ohel, of the middle of Rebbe, the, the cat let, let go and ran away. So, a tzaddik is not someone to play with. Um, I don't want to elaborate on this too much, but, um, but uh, it, it's, it's, I, I hope the message is clear. I'd like to focus more on the positive. But when the Torah teaches us any word of the Torah, it's holy and we have to learn it and we have to try to understand it. Let's look back for a moment and learn the first of the three statements. From Yehi, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Yehi, Chavod Chaverach, Chaviv Alacha Kishalach, the honor of your friend should be to you, beloved to you, just as your own. So first of all, what does the Bartanura say over here? This is a connection to the next statement, which is all the first message of the three. The connection between that and and do not be easy to get upset. When will you be able to honor your friend just as you honor yourself when you don't get so upset so easily? And I've seen this so clearly by people that when a person is easy to get upset, it's much easier, God forbid, to, to, um, to embarrass one's friend, to not to, not to act with, with the ultimate honor and respect. And the bartender explains the second statement, like we said earlier, is to do tshuva one day before a person passes away. And the third one is about the importance of Tamid HaChamim. I would like to point, uh, to spend a moment now to talk about the first of the three statements of Rabbi Eliezer. A person's honor of his friend should be beloved to you just as your own honor. So we've talked a number of times that seemingly, Pirkei Avot 
is not here to teach us basic mitzvot. It's supposed to be teaching us beyond the letter of the law. So why is it that we're saying something which seems to be so basic, the most important mitzvah in the Torah, the Ahafta Lareha you should love your fellow Jew as yourself. That is a great rule in the Torah. Why do we need to say this statement in this Mishnah, in the Perkei Avot? I would like to add that in the in uh, two Mishnahs, Mishnah 12, Rabbi Yossi says a similar statement. Yehi mamon chaverach, chaverach keshalach. The money, the finances, the belongings of your friend should be beloved to you just as your own. Rabbi Eliezer talks about the honor and Rabbi Yossi talks about the money of your friend. So we're back to square one. Doesn't the Torah tell us clearly the Ahavta Larecha Kamocha? You should love your friend just as you love yourself. And the answer is that when we look at what the Torah says, the Ahavta Larecha Kamocha, one can say, you know, I don't really understand how it's possible, but I'll do it anyways. If that's if that's what's needed, if that's what the mitzvah is, I'll push myself to it. What Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yossi are saying over here. Yehi chavod chavirach chaviv alecha keshalach. It should be beloved to you. Don't do it just because kabbalat o, accepting upon the yoke of Hashem. And you do it because you do it and, and the end of conversation. But we want, we want you to do it with all your heart. That the honor of your friend should be beloved to you. Don't do it just because it's being imposed upon you. Rather, because something that you want to do, something you feel part of. And then the same thing goes with Rabbi Yossi. Yehi mamon chaverach. The money of your friend should be chaviv alach keshalach. Should be beloved to you just as your own. Moreover, When you look at the mitzvah in the Torah, the mitzvah is to love the person himself, the individual. But all of a sudden now we're saying not only the individual, but also the honor of the individual and the money, the finances of the individual. Even though they're not necessarily connected to the person himself, nevertheless, you need to love everything about the person. Chaviv, beloved, the person sweated in order to, to, in order to receive, in order to gain, in order to earn this money. He put his life into it. So that's clear that that belongs to the person. The question is about kavod. What's this whole thing of honor? So it says in Chassidut that we have in every scenario we have the pimiyut, the innermost part, and the makif. Makif is that which surrounds a person or anything. So, for example, we have, um, there are many, many examples. Um, basically, the pimiyut is that which you take in. Let's take for an example, um, food. Food is an example from the Alter Rebbe in chapter 5 in Tanya. Food is something which you take in, you internalize, and clothes is something which is around you. So in a sense, it's part of you. Because when you look at the person who's wearing his clothes, and you say, what's his name? You say, his name is Moshe. So basically, he is connected to his clothes on some level. There are many examples for this, but let's, let's suffice to say this. Kavod, honor, is also a sense of, of uh, an aura that comes out of a person. So, for example, if you have a president, a chief rabbi, a very, very holy person, a very special person, a very accomplished person, and the person walks into the room, you see a special honor that listen, surrounds the person, so to speak. 
the aura is around. It's not part of the person per se. It goes with him. It's his honor. It's his, it's his respect. So usually, a person of respect will sit in the front, for example. That's where he belongs. But if the person chooses to sit in the back, it doesn't in any way belittle his greatness because his honor, his kavod, goes with him, accompanies him wherever he goes. So what, in summary, what the Mishnah is saying is, not only, like the Torah says, you have to learn, not only should you love your friend himself as you love yourself, rather, moreover, you should longings, you should honor, you should respect, you should like, and also his, his, his kavod, his honor. In other words, in, in, in simple words, we should have pleasure in honoring someone. Not just honor them because we're told to honor them. But it should bring us honor. It should bring us, um, it should bring us pleasure to give someone dignity. To, 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 to respect someone. It should give us pleasure. And that's a very, very special level. And we need to bring ourselves to, to, to that level. Just one final point is that we talk about you should love your friend just as yourself. And over here we're talking about which is just like Ahava. Ahava is love. Chaviv is Chavivut. Also a lovable person. Some, someone which is, which is a lovable concept. So not only for certain people who are beloved and just have a special chen, a special, uh, um, a special what's the word I'm looking for? <coughs> A special, um, like um, likable um, characteristic about them, that wherever they turn, whoever they speak to, people simply like them. But also someone who is not necessarily so likable. When you look at them at first glance, you're not necessarily so uh, head over heels. But even such a person, a person should be. We, we should we should we should uh, embrace a person. We should we should really. Um, Show them the extreme love. The Ahavta Larecha Kamocha. Todaraba, thank you very much for joining us. And I'd be very honored if you can join us tonight at 7.30 at Chabad of Rechavia in person for our class in Letters of the Alter Rebbe in the Tanya. We're going to have a great class tonight for the last portion of Chapter 27. Thank you very much. All the best.